Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the preview of the 2022 World Cup, at least the preview that I'm gonna do. Uh, we are within 24 hours if you watch this video right around the time when it posts and of course before the World Cup. It's not within 24 hours but it's rather rather close uh, when I'm shooting this video but it will post a little bit later than that. So yeah. Everyone will say this is the first Winter World Cup that we are having of a lifetime, which is not entirely true. Because uh, two of the past three World Cups were technically also Winter World Cups, which uh, just happened to happen in the Southern Hemisphere, where it is winter when we have summer. So this is now the first time that we have a, um, you know, Northern Hemisphere Winter World Cup. Which, given the temperatures in Doha at the moment, uh, is kind of weird because uh, when I saw it, they are very summery temperatures, very dry temperatures and so on, which will have an impact. But uh, in this preview, I'm going to first talk about a few things um, that I wanted to address about this World Cup, namely what I'm personally expecting uh, from this World Cup uh, in general and maybe then for certain regions um, will go of course um, through the groups to have kind of you know uh, at least make a group by group breakdown quickly um, then I want to point out uh, you know top five um, matches to watch during the group stage uh, give you the prediction based on the uh, model which uh, includes uh, the ratings from FIFA and the ELO rating as well as the bookmakers odds and then I decided I'm gonna give a little bit of an out there prediction on my personal one. Uh, how I could see a surprise World Cup could turn out. But the first thing I need to uh, address proper probably is uh, that this is the first World Cup where I think there are the first World Cup, at least in my uh, life as a football fan where the attention on the host nation is largely negative. And we had a little bit of that in Russia. But Qatar puts it on a whole different level. And it is so interesting at this uh, point in time, because now Russia is the uh, great pariah of the international stage. And Qatar, uh, we still don't know really, at least I don't really know what to think about them, because the whole region uh, is in, in a way so uh, politically delicate that you don't know who are the good guys, who are the bad guys. They just all don't really like each other all that much. Um, we all know that the World Cup probably should not, should never have happened in Qatar. This, on the other side, is not to say that I'm thinking it's a bad idea to put a World Cup in this part of the world. This is a soccer match part of the world that I'm, I'm sure if this was done, a little bit uh, smarter, if you would like, um, for a better uh, like word. We could have had a great World Cup in the Arab world. I have no doubt about that. And yes, we probably would have had a Winter World Cup then as well. And yes, there is now a bid between Egypt, Saudi Arabia and Greece for uh, the World Cup in eight years, where we probably will also need a Winter World Cup if that was to happen. Um, part, part of me uh, would think this is an interesting one. Part, part of me says, nah, maybe we don't need that, that one. But, you know, just saying out there, I think it's not a bad idea to put a World Cup in that area. However, the way it happened with all the corruption, with all the, um, uh, the problems with building stadiums and uh, all the human rights violations, it is not a good feel, a feel good World Cup in that sense. And then if you see the latest news reports on how some reporters are, are treated, doesn't, you know, doesn't get fuzzy vibes uh, or Christmassy vibes in that sense. Uh, so yeah, I, that's all I want to say about that because uh, it is better reported out there. I can uh, recommend watch the Netflix documentary where the, uh, which uh, on FIFA, which is really, really, really good. The only thing that I have, have had to say is that I it, I get the feeling that Gianni Infantino is this clean man, which he is not as well. So uh, that's maybe the one downside. But other than that, it's a really good documentary on uh, everything surrounding there. Um, and yeah, getting a little bit to it. So there's also a five-part series on TIFO on YouTube that I think is also very much worth your time. 
Going into the world, what do I expect from the World Cup itself? Um, first of all, I think this World Cup will have a mixture of a 2010 and 2002 feel. I've already said the temperatures will play a part um, and I expect the level of play not be too good overall. Um, at least at the beginning. I think it might pick up a little bit later. I So this is for me the 2010 uh, feature where I think the, the group stage was really, really dull and not good. However, uh, there's also the issue that the preparation time is very little for these teams. I mean, the big teams, they have one week of pre preparation. You need to find yourselves. That's why I think we will see one or the other upset. Uh, nations that had the chance to prepare the team for a little bit longer, like Qatar and I would uh, think like Iran and potentially Saudi Arabia, you know, teams that don't have their stars out, out there will have an advantage. This is similar to what South Korea had for their home World Cup, where they also had a great coach in Hughes Hiddink uh, back there. But overall, given the temperature conditions, where it will be really hot, and especially the afternoon games, I don't expect great games, although heat is usually uh, a good way to get some drama in, but this will happen then in the knockout stage. I don't expect it to just happen yet in the group stage, because the teams need to find themselves. Uh, this for me is one major thing. Um, another thing is I don't expect a good World Cup for Africa. I really don't see, uh, if I look at all the African nations, there's one that I'm mildly excited about, and it's not Senegal. Uh, I think Senegal could do just about well and they got a decent draw. However, I think losing Sadio Man is maybe uh, less for the team, but more um, you know, for the overall spirit. You lose your talisman. I think it will be really, really rough for Senegal. No, I'm um, higher on Morocco, who are in probably the most interesting group of this World Cup will go uh, there. I think they could do something. All the other African teams, and especially Cameroon and Ghana, I think will be cannon fodder. Uh, Tunisia is not a nation that shows up at the World Cup. Typically, they usually do it for one game. I have bookmarked which game this is. I will tell you later. Uh, and yeah, we already talked about Senegal. On the other side, I do actually expect that some of the Asian nations, especially the ones from the uh, Arab region, I do expect them to do reasonably well. Uh, you probably will, will have some support uh, there. You are familiar with the conditions and you had a little bit preparation time. Now, um, the strongest Asian nation is probably Iran. Uh, however, we don't know how the uh, situation, the domestic CC situation, is actually affecting them. So this is another interesting thing uh, to look out for. Of the other Asian nations, I actually am rather high over on South Korea, but it depends on how Son, how fit Son will be and how much he can go in. Um, as for South America, who have only four contenders, I think South America could do quite well at this one, um, because the European nations, there's not this clear top nation. Yes, there would be. But that clear top nation is France, and we know they have many injuries, and we know the um, winners' course. Um, England have been doing well, largely do, through good, good draws. Um, I think Spain is a little bit hampered by a lack of offense. Portugal would have all the talent in the world. They are hampered by uh, their coach and their uh, superstar. And I think the Netherlands are very much still a work in progress, as are Germany. So, and Belgium and Croatia are more on the waning side than on the rising side. So, I think if there was ever a World Cup where the European hegemony, which has lasted now for uh, ever since the 2006 World Cup, so for a good 20 years, that this is broken. This is now the time. I would say... Let's run quickly through the groups. Uh, you see here uh, the whole draw uh, arranged by pot. So the top is pot 1, 2, 3, 4 as for a for, 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 for draw. And you uh, get in addition on the left uh, the rating that I have assigned it uh, based on uh, the um, you know FIFA, ELO and so on, which uh, should, should give us a clear indication 
from those who are the favorites. And in Group A, uh, we see that the Netherlands are, uh, of course, the strongest team. They are, they are the one big name nation in there. Uh, Fall by Qatar, Senegal and Ecuador. Um, Qatar with the home field advantage could spring a surprise. I think, I honestly have a feeling they might not make it out of the group stage. However, they are the one team that probably is very well drilled, so that has to be said. I am actually, Senegal is kind of the hipster's choice to go out there together with the Netherlands. I think that the Netherlands will go through that group. Um, it's wholly expected, although I could... Well, I think he had, uh, Louis van Gaal um, has built a really good squad. I think I could see them being eliminated, but it's really, really hard to see that. I'm actually looking at Ecuador from that group. Group B uh, is nominally the strongest one because all of the teams are rather high in the FIFA ranking. Um, however, I think there's major troubles for the top two teams, England and the United States. I do not expect anything much from the United States and England have been in a particularly poor form. Iran could spring an upset. I'm not sure about Wales, but Wales have shown that the spirit. So uh, this is a rather open group, but I don't think we will see good games out of this group. Of course, Thanksgiving, we have, on Thanksgiving Day, we have England against the United States. The United States have never lost to England at the World Cup. They met only twice, so it's a bogus statistic. But uh, at the same token, Iran won the only uh, time that they played the United States at the World Cup. So also have that in mind, that was in 98. Group C, a nice warm-up group for Argentina, I want to say. Um, Mexico is probably the team that everyone says should finish second and I would agree with that. However, I, from what I hear, Mexico have a really, really rough time getting uh, into this World World Cup. Their overall form is not great. However, they always manage to get something out of the World Cup. Poland, they have the other superstar in, the, in this group and you know, it's the duel of the two, the past and the current Barcelona superstar with Messi against Lewandowski. Uh, we know that Poland at the World Cup usually has been disappointing. This is the one time they could break this. I think despite this big red dot there. I don't know, Saudi Arabia? I mean, it's more or less a home World Cup for them, although with a hostile crowd. So we gotta see. Group D. We know that France will get eliminated at the group stage because this has been happening to world champions. It's, but it's really, really hard to see them eliminate getting out of this group. Yes, Denmark we can all see. Denmark has beaten France this year already twice. I don't think that Lightning will, start, stri uh, will strike three times though. But I could see Denmark winning this group. Australia are a team that probably should not have qualified for that World Cup. They, they are a little bit lucky to, to be there. This is not a vintage Australia team. Don't think this is probably the one Asian nation where I have major question marks behind. Tunisia is a team that doesn't really show up. However, when they play against France, I might actually think that they could take some points off there. However, it is really, really hard to see France getting eliminated out of this group. Group E, everyone will say Spain, Germany. Um, don't forget about Japan. Japan uh, is probably one of those well-drilled sites and both Spain and Germany are vulnerable. Spain probably have the best coach, more on that in a little bit, but so Germany's coach is not far behind. Both teams are highly potent and can make deep runs in this tournament, especially if the draw falls their way. It's a group based on the, on the draw where actually finishing second might have a, an ad, ad, advantage because the group winners on the left side will meet, it, meet each other in the quarterfinals. You see the big Brazil down there. If you finish second, you go on the other side, which arguably is easier. Have that in mind. So uh, the Spain-Germany matchup might actually not be that great. And I still don't want to discount Japan in there because I think they're a good squad that could hurt any one of these. However, it should be Spain and Germany coming out of six group. Group F, I think is the most even group. Yes, Belgium are uh, high in the ratings. Yes, Croatia um, um, World Cup uh, run, runners up Bel Belgium in third place. So in that sense, there's a lot of um, pedigree pedi pedi there. Morocco is a dark horse falling into this Arabian um, circle in a way and Canada have been by far the best team in CONCACAF. That is an interesting group that could go all the way down to the wire. 
Um, you know, a little bit like the Spurs Frankfurt Marseille group in the champ in the, in, 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 in the Champions League. I actually feel that Belgium is definitely a way down from what I've seen in the Nations League, uh, while Croatia still has a little bit in them. Don't overlook Morocco and definitely don't overlook Canada in this one. Group G. Uh, I would argue it's exactly how the colors say Brazil, the top favorites of this tournament. This is a super deep Brazil squad with one of the best coaches in the entire tournament. Argentina, fortunately, has always also a good one. Uh, it's between Switzerland and Serbia. And normally, and you see, they're very, very, very close together in rating. Switzerland just ahead of Serbia. Which, what, uh, I mean, those two teams match up so well because I think Swiss, Switzerland is a very stable team with a very solid defense and probably the best goalkeeper in the tournament. Yes, I would rate Jan Sommer in for a Switzerland jersey. I would rate higher than Thibaut Courtois for Belgium. And they have a relatively solid defense and, you know, a little bit good stuff up there. Where Serbia is all about the offensive capabilities. This is a team that could dazzle us. But I'm not sure about their defense. Cameroon. I'm sorry to say, I think we are now off the Cameroon train. Because since 1990, they have not shown us anything. Uh, and Group H is another really tight one. Although I would argue... Uh, Ghana is similar to Cameroon. We all remember the good Ghana team from 2010. Forget about that. Ghana is a freak. It's a freak result that Ghana is here. It should actually be Nigeria that place. Because that is a great uh, team. Uh, so uh, it, the African qualifiers, the way they panned pan out, it was, not in the fa it was not in favor of some big nations. And Africa will be hurting. Um, I'm actually in this group. I really do like Uruguay. I think they have quite some talent uh, there, um, and not only the old talent, but you know, there are also like a Fede Valverde, Darwin Nunez in there. This could be a really, really interesting team. Whereas Portugal, under a different coach, I would rate Portugal as being one of the top favorites for this uh, tour to tournament. However, we had the whole Ronaldo situation, which I think destabilizes the squad, and we have a coach that holds them back, similar to England. And so I could very well see South Korea moving in there uh, as well. Now, having talked about the groups, five games that I am personally looking out for the group stage. And I picked just five. I mean, uh, the first set of fixtures, I was really looking out for Senegal, Netherlands and Sadio Mane got uh, injured. It might still be a good thing. But I think the one fixture that really um, grabs me in the first uh, set of fixtures is Brazil against Serbia, which is the last one. I would expect Brazil to win this easily, but I think Serbia can hurt them. Then, match day two has probably three arguably really good fixtures. France, Denmark. I think this will uh, could already be a decider of how things are going forward. Spain, Germany um, is nominally the biggest fixture of the entire group stage. However, I said that already. Spot two might be of an advantage. And Portugal, Uruguay has the exact opposite because uh, this is for the group win. And the winner will avoid Brazil. The loser plays Brazil most likely in the next round. So uh, this to me is probably uh, the most important matchup of the entire uh, group stage. But the last one, I think it will be the hottest one. I really feel Serbia against Switzerland. It's not Iran, USA. No. It's Serbia against Switzerland. We had it already the last World World Cup. There is not only are these two teams probably very evenly matched. There's a lot of ill will because of the Albanian contingent within the Swiss squad that just want to rub it into Serbia. And then we have the big Serbian, uh, the talent that is up, up front against what I already said, the Swiss uh, sturdiness. This is almost a must watch because tempers will flare high there. I'm absolutely certain there. Now, going into uh, the predictions, I mean, I already said so, so we can go a little bit uh, quicker. Uh, Group A, the Netherlands and Qatar are now expected to go through. Senegal dropped a lot in the ratings. It is England and the United States, although I said, as I said, I don't uh, quite see it, but by ratings, they will have to go through. But you see, especially for the last uh, spot here, it's rather, rather tight. Argentina should uh, walk through through a group and then it's uh, tight. Mexico will make it. France ahead of Denmark. Yeah, by the book. 
Uh, Spain ahead of Germany, then Belgium ahead of Croatia, Brazil ahead of Switzerland, and Portugal ahead of Uruguay. So uh, if we go just by expectations, the, there are no surprises in there. For surprises, wait for my crazy bracket that I will present to you in just a little bit. But we'll get a good feel of how the bracket can pan out because if all the favorites go through, we see who will match up with whom. And I honestly, I do not like this draw, the group stage draw, because I think, again, the top half will be rather uneven. And then if we add to that, that potentially a France might not finish in first place, it could get really, really tough up, up top. Uh, we have the Netherlands against the United States. Uh, Netherlands moving on. Argentina would be expected over Denmark. This is a tough fixture, but this could also be Argentina against France. Have, 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 have in mind. And then my two favorite teams at this World Cup, I'm wearing the Netherlands now, but uh, it's uh, historically Netherlands and Ar 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 Argentina are in uh, two of my three uh, teams that I usually so, so, so support. So yeah, uh, those will meet in the those are scheduled to meet in the quarterfinal. The Netherlands actually on paper have a relatively easy route, but they never bodes well. Spain, Croatia, yeah, that would be a nice one. And Brazil, Uruguay, uh, if it goes by form, I mean Brazil, Uruguay, or Brazil, Portugal. This is this is uh, marquee stuff there. And then Spain against Brazil, uh, also, I think that's a really really interesting one. Argentina against Brazil in the semi-final. Uh, the two best teams meeting in the upper half. So uh, you see already the upper half is low. The lower half, not so much. I mean, if England would advance as group of winners, they play probably Qatar. Uh, France would then play Mexico, which I also would expect them to win. And then England against France, two teams, uh, you know, France would go on there, I would uh, think. But also two teams... Uh, yes, France, uh, everyone is high on their talent, but given, you know, the champion's curse, we gotta see. Belgium over Germany, at least it's expected. I don't see Belgium winning against Germany and Portugal against Swiss, uh, Switzerland, which uh, would set up now Belgium against Portugal, where Belgium is, uh, is um, favored. France against Belgium and then France meeting Brazil in the final a rematch of the 98 World Cup where Brazil is very very likely to win and Argentina will take third place at least that's now the projection in every video that I will do you will get a new new projection we'll see how things change as the tournament progresses however as I said we have now before that let's look at who are the favorites overall you see it a little bit back in my background if you know how I arrange my jerseys Brazil Argentina, France, Spain, and now fourth. I think those four teams are the top favorites. The winner will come out of those four, and probably two will fall away relatively soon. I also, uh, by the quarterfinals, I think uh, we already saw that not all of them can make it into the semifinals. I would say two of these will not make it to the semifinals. That's just a hunch that I have. Um, then I would say uh, Belgium, Portugal, England, Netherlands, Germany. Those are the next ones. And then if you look at dark horses, Denmark, Uruguay, Croatia. And the rest is kind of so and so. And I think we could even argue Croatia. They had one run too many. Okay, let's run you through my... Uh, I want to call it not crazy prediction. What I did is I went um, game by game. And you see here, uh, match day one, the fig, the fig fixtures. I want to point out just a few. Um, I think Wales will beat the United States. I think that's not unrealistic uh, on the first page. And I think Mexico will just somehow beat Poland. Uh, the opener will be a relatively dull 1-1. One, one. On the second page, I think Japan will hurt Germany a little bit. Uh, Belgium against Canada is, could be a fun game. I also think a South Korea Uruguay will be rather, rather tight there. Uh, match day two, uh, I think Ecuador will hold the Netherlands. Uh, Qatar, Senegal could be a uh, belter. And I think Iran over Wales is a surprise result. Denmark will not beat France a third time. I don't see that ha happening. And yeah, maybe Tunisia get a win for Africa. Uh, on the other page, uh, it is all square between Spain and Germany. I think Canada will surprise a little bit against Croatia. Morocco will also surprise us there. Um, and Uruguay will beat Portugal. That's how I saw it. 
Then uh, Ecuador and the Netherlands will get the wins. Iran will beat the United States. Wales will get a point against England. Uh, Tunisia will put the best performance in of the tournament and will take a point from France, allowing Denmark to win the group, as we will see. Um, where uh, Saudi Arabia and Mexico play out a 2-2 draw. On the other side, Croatia will beat Belgium and Morocco will get the win over Canada. I don't see this as a big so surprise. Spain and Germany winning. Uh, South Korea again getting a point against Portugal and Serbia. I, I think if Switzerland and Serbia play 10 games, Switzerland will probably win 6 or 7 out of... Uh, will not lose 6 or 7 out of these. However, they will lose this one. Just saying. And Brazil will dazzle us against Cameroon. So we have the final groups in Netherlands and Ecuador. I have Iran winning the group. <laughs> That was a little bit of a surprise to me. Uh, Argentina, Mexico, Denmark winning the group over France. So the um, certain halves get a little bit more loaded already. Uh, Spain and Germany just ahead of Japan. Uh, Morocco winning the group over Croatia and Belgium are out. Mm -hmm. Brazil, Serbia and Uruguay, South, South Korea, Portugal are out. I did not plan for that. Do not use my predictions here to make your betting. Just let me say that uh, as well. For me, it's very, very important. This was really just me going through it without any plan. And let's see where it goes. Yeah. If I would actually submit a betting sheet, I would maybe make a, a prediction. I will use the prediction then a little bit. Try to plan it out a little bit more to see where it goes. However, this is how I decided to, it should be a fun thing. Now, with Iran winning, you will already see, we have now the following round of 16s major. We have Netherlands against England. This top half, it gets even more loaded. We have Argentina, France, so those four will make one of the semifinalists. The next one, Denmark, Mexico against Iran, Ecuador. Yep, yep. Though among those four, we have one semifinalist. Spain, Croatia, Brazil, South Korea. Interesting one, and then for Morocco, Germany, Uruguay, Serbia. This is very much like a 2010 bracket, almost where you know we had how Uruguay got into the semifinals because they had uh, Ghana, the United States, and South Korea in there. So um, this Denmark, Mexico, Iran, Ecuador looks interesting. So how do I have it? I think the Netherlands are better than England. They always have their number. Argentina will exact revenge on France, but it will not be the 4-3. I think it will be more 1-0 because France will be uh, tight. Denmark is better than Mexico. So I see them. Iran will beat Ecuador, but it's an overtime. I think this would be a rather boring game. We have Spain again over Croatia. Again, not a 5-3 after overtime, but a 2-1. Brazil too good for South Korea. Uh, Hyunmin Son's journey will end here. And while I'm riding high on Morocco, we had it in 86, I don't see Germany losing to Morocco. And Uruguay and Serbia will be evenly matched, but I think that Uruguay will win this on penalties. Leading us to the following quarterfinals, and when I saw this, I went like, oh no. <laughs> Spain-Brazil is the marquee matchup. We have Netherlands-Argentina, we have Germany-Uruguay, which has also quite some history with Denmark-Iran. I actually think that this Spain team can hurt Brazil and they will beat Brazil 2-1. Brazil, the favorite, rarely ever wins. And Brazil have been the favorites ever since I'm watching, except for one time. And that was in 2002 and there they, they won it. In 2002 they were, they, they were not favorites, so have that in mind. Brazil usually is not living up to, to the expectation, although this Brazil team is absolutely loaded. However, I think Spain can hurt Brazil 2-1. Argentina will beat the Netherlands. They are a better team than the Netherlands. Um, I don't see Germany losing to Uruguay, but this goes to penalty, and in penalties, Germany always wins. And then I think Denmark is also better than Iran. And the one thing about Denmark is I don't... It turns out to now that they will make it to the semifinals. I honestly don't think that Denmark will make it to the semifinals because... I think there will be a lot of ill will towards Denmark because they are, um, you know, with their shirts and all the messaging against Qatar. I don't think they will get all the, all the support. This is one underlying thing, feeling that I have. But, you know, maybe I have Denmark in the semifinals. Yes, it's a hipster's choice. But the way it pans out, I only see Denmark going through, through there. Iran in the semifinals, that's... To me, this is a step too far. Okay. 
We have the semifinals, Spain against Argentina. Moi, this is juicy. This is juicy. And uh, just look at Argentina to get to the semifinal had to beat um, first France, then the Netherlands. Now they have to play Spain and they will beat Spain as well. Uh, Spain would have a similar tough run. Germany against Denmark. Sorry, guys. That's a step too far for Denmark. Germany will beat Denmark. Spain against Denmark. Spain will get third place. And Argentina against Germany. Sounds familiar. And this time Messi will get his revenge. At least this is what I'm wishing for. It will be a 3-2, but it will be an overtime. And this time many Messi scores the winning penalty. At least this is what I want to see. I think up until the quarterfinal, I went to how I uh, kind of predicted in a way. Starting from the quarterfinal, it's a little bit more wishful thinking. So take it for it for it for it once. I would love to see Argentina win that World Cup. But hey. Any case, who do you have as a favorite? I, for me, honestly, as much as I wish for Ar Argentina, or maybe even the Netherlands we, swooping, as much as I, I do like France, actually, as much as I would like to see France actually also make maybe a deep run again, because I think their, their team can be so exciting. Um, it is really, really hard to look past Brazil. And I want to leave you with my top five coaches <laughs> that I uh, came up with. I would say number five is Louis van Gaal. Uh, a few years ago, at, uh, eight years ago, I would have said he was the best coach at the tournament. He's getting a little, a little bit old, but he has done something. Uh, on number four, I would say Scaloni from Argentina. Number three, Hansi Flick. He has, well, he has a huge pedigree, but I, I have, I think, a Chiche. He has never worked in Europe, but I think he's a really, really good coach. And what he has done with this Brazil team, absolutely. And the best coach, I think, is really Luis Enrique. But he is also the one that's most out there. Just leaving with this thought. In any case, who do you think will, the, will win the World Cup? How do you look uh, forward to this tournament? Um, last thing on the schedule, I will plan to do near daily videos. I'm planning to do one minute videos after each game that I've watched and give you a little bit of an update there. If I can, I will do it just how I see it. I also want to put in some jersey reviews, so it, there might be days where I'm actually skipping a video. Uh, but every other day, at least, I want to give a World Cup update. Um, so let's see how it goes. It's very much schedule dependent for me. In any case... Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.